Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox 2 video and today we are doing another episode of checking out one of your guys' solar systems. So today we have got one simulation to do from the Discord user Krant, so a massive thank you to them for sending this in. And this one is called the Dine system and this will be episode 112 now. That's mad, but um, yeah, let's continue. So yeah, the DNA system, they also sent a document which I've got up um, ready to read as well. So without further ado, we'll just get straight into the system they have prepared for us today. So let's go ahead and uh, open up the menu and let's see what they have got for us. So yeah, I've got a massive document um, which I need to read. So um, yeah, okay, that's always that area all pops up. So yeah, read the Word document. So yeah, it's a big um, Word document, but yeah, we're going to be heading to the star um, as we begin here. So before we um, get started, let's um, begin with this reading. So um, seven planets orbit the hot main sequence star, Dine. I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. Its discovery was part of a program that is searching a new world for, for humanity. Although none of the planets fit the required standards, scientists aim to explore the system further in hopes of discovering potential life forms. Okay. Okay, so we're going to head to the star itself now. So here it is. So yeah, main sequence star, like he said. Um, seven planets around here. Luminosity of six suns. A little hotter than the sun. So a little more buffed up than the sun is. So yeah, there we go there. But now, moving on to the first of the planets here. This one looks quite similar to um, a Make Make or a Make Make. Um, one of my custom ones. But yeah, here it is here. So yeah, Dine B is a Mercury-sized scorching hot planet. With a red, at red atmosphere given by the rocks on its surface. Being tidally locked, temperatures in the illuminated area reach up to around 500 degrees. Okay. Uh, degrees celsius um the dark half of the planet experiences freezing temperatures of maximum minus 70 okay so it must orbit the other sun um quick enough that it doesn't um lose too much heat um by the sound so we can check the um menu here click for options change the host yeah i know i know that i reset my settings that's why it's um saying all that stuff but yeah there we go so that's apparently tidy locked it doesn't look like the simulation's ever been run actually so we'll have to uh check that out so i'm guessing um it takes 357 days and it... Oh, no, it does rotate every one. Okay, see there, that is about um, Dali Lock then, yeah. So there we go. But yeah, overall, actually, quite a nice um, red-looking object. I like the red atmosphere on it. I like the black and sort of... Um, is it is it like a light pink? I say it is like a light pink. So I like, I like that colour mixed together. Quite It reminds me of like Mars, but like I said, it is a Mercury-sized um, um, object. So it's like a Mars-Mercury hybrid, sort of a mix between the two with the colours, the temperature, um, all that there. So yeah, there we go. But now moving on to um, object C here. So Dine C. Uh, this is a ocean world. Okay, so this is an ocean world with a red atmosphere. So again, following the trend of a red atmosphere, it is larger than the Earth by a third and usually has temperatures of 370 degrees Celsius. The ocean covering the whole planet is at least 50 kilometers deep, although further investigation is needed. It is orbited by two moons. So yeah, here we go here. So it's a very, very red object, as we can see. You can see some red clouds and there as well, if you look carefully. So yeah, there we go there. The red atmosphere. Oh, very um, good looking there. Um, so yeah, then moving on to the moons, so we've got a nice orange one here for blue atmosphere, very similar to sort of what Venus looks like with that colour theme there. Obviously without the blue atmosphere though, so it looks quite similar to Venus's surface. And then moving on to the second moon, quite similar to the first planet we saw, but with a little more white on it, but still got that sort of dark red and light, light pink sort of mix um, in there as well. So yeah, there we go there. There are all of those guys in orbit of our second planet of the, um, around the star. So now moving on to the third object. This one has a purple trail this time. This one looks pretty exotic as well with the colour scheme here. It's also got some um, nice rings as well if you look carefully there. So yeah, there we go. Okay, so the, um, this one is um, object D. So um, this is a beautiful planet with turquoise, rocky fields and purple crystal canyons. Okay, oh, that is really cool. Um, it has three, or, or three halves of Earth size and three times as heavy. It sports a purple atmosphere given by the toxic gases emitted by the crystals on its surface. That's pretty cool. Um, well thought up there. Very nice. Um, it is by far the best contender in this system for supporting life although humans are not able to survive here dine d doesn't see temperatures over the negatives not even in the daytime it is orbited by a big moon purple in color theory suggests that is an impact occurred millions of years ago explaining the moon and its purple crystals okay that's a pretty cool explanation um of all that so you got a really really cool um mix of um, colors and that's a very nice color scheme there very nicely explained as well of all the um, stuff going on that is, a, that is a beautiful looking object with the purple like the turquoise um green there that is that's a great looking object there so very very nice indeed really really like that so yeah there we go there obviously with the purple rings as well and then it's moon over here also with the purple color scheme but without the green on it so um yeah there we go there but that is a that's a beautiful planet really really like that one so um yeah there we go definitely my favorite we have seen out of all the objects so far okay now moving on to um Dine e over here this one is very dark in color with a purple and black sort of theme um going on it there we'll see some more white areas as well okay so um right this one 
Okay, this is the largest rocky exoplanet discovered. It is 51 Earths in mass and nearly 4 in diameter. Its purple colour is given by the light of a nearby nebula bounced off its reflective surface. Oh, wow. Um, it has no atmosphere, no moons, and temperatures go as... Low as 110 or minus... No, no, no. Oh, no, it is minus 110. Okay. So, yeah, minus 110. So, yeah, there we go there. Very nice object indeed. Very nice purple colour there as well. Pretty cool texture it's got on it as well there. So, yeah, there we go. That is um, Dine E there. Or Dine A, however you want to say it. So, um, yeah, there we go. All right, and now moving on to the next one. This is um, Object F, and it's in a very, very um, blood red sort of colour there. Okay, so this one is a red gas giant. Um, 1.5 times the size of Jupiter and 1.29 times as heavy. Seven moons orbit it, mostly captured dwarf planets. Its largest moon, Dine FC, is speculated to have formed together with Dine D, being similar in appearance apart from the red crystals that cover the moon's valleys. But later on, Dine F pulled the moon away from its sister planet due to being lighter in mass. Storms on the gas giant have recorded winds of um, over 2,000 kilometers an hour there. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty cool um, detail he's putting into all of these. Honestly, really really nice um, job there. So here it is, the planet itself. So yeah, very very blood red in color. Got a few um, mixtures of different colors in there. You can see the bands. It gets a little lighter and dark, depending on where you are. So yeah, the the south is a little lighter and paler, and the north is a lot darker. So um, yeah, there we go there. Right now, moving on to the uh, moons. So we've got this one here going with a pink color theme there. It almost reminds me of Pluto that one, but with a little more um, pink on it, obviously. So um, yeah, there we go there. So we've got that one. Then we have FC here. So this was the one he mentioned um, is speculated to have formed together with Dine AD. So if we go back to um, Object D quickly. So that was one we were just um, at um, a little while ago. So this one here, the very exotic looking one. This one is speculated to um, may have formed near that due to its similar sort of um, appearance. Um, but yeah, there we go. So this one's going with a more red atmosphere. We can still see the turquoise on it, but no purple on this one. So um, yeah, there you go. Quite a nicely designed object with the green, or the turquoise, sorry, the greeny turquoise, the white, and then like the reddish areas as well. Really, really cool and nicely done there. Very, very nice. So yeah, there we go. There is FC. And now we're going to FD over here. So this one is a, it looks to be a frozen, or no, no, it's an all-water world actually. So yeah, there we go there. It actually, there's a few bits of land by the looks of it. It's so a very, very low amounts, but yeah, there we go there. So there is this object. So now heading to this one. So we've got FE over here, which is actually the periodic table for iron. FE is iron. But just a nice fun fact there. But um, yeah, here we go. So we've got this one. So yeah, there we go there. So that's um, going with a different sort of colour scheme. More of like a light, like a military sort of greenish colour there. That's what I'm getting. Um, then we have FF over here. So this one's going with a blue and white colour theme. A very sort of dark navy blue and white. So yeah, there we go there. It's quite a nicely uh, mixture of colours. Really, this guy really knows how to um, do his colours well. Really, really nice job of all these. Uh, and then we have FG over here. Very similar colour scheme to the one we previously saw. So yeah, there we go. Also with the blue and the white. I do prefer the previous one though. I think the texture does look um, better on it. Um, but yeah, there we are. And then moving on to the last one, we've got a little minor asteroid object all the way out here. And as we can see, we're quite far away from the gas giant now. As we can see, the gas giant's quite small in appearance from here. So um, yeah, there we go. Right, so there is um, the, all of those guys. And now moving on to um, Object G. So we've got a big jump out now. So we have Object G over here. How far is this guy from um, this star? So about 47 AU. So we're beyond the orbit of like Neptune um, from the sun now. So yeah, here we go here. Okay, so Dine AG is a snowy planet orbiting far away from its parent star. It is mostly considered a dwarf planet due to its small size. However, it has enormous unstable iron core that triggers earthquakes at times. Earthquakes on Dine AG exceed 10 on the... Um, the richer scale, that's it, yeah. I forgot that was a thing, actually, the um, richer scale of the earthquakes. But, um, yeah, there we go. So, um, here it is. Yeah, I've not heard that term in a long time. But, yeah, here we go. So, how, how big is this guy, actually? So, yeah, it's about the size of Pluto. A little, a little bigger. We compare it to Pluto quickly. Actually, we'll, we'll compare it to Pluto and Eris. So, here, here's Pluto. So, because, yeah, it's, it's definitely bigger. And then Eris is slightly smaller than Pluto, but larger than mass. So, yeah, there, um, that, that's not Eris. Eris is there. So, yeah, there we go. So, we have a little comparison between these guys. This is 1426. Pluto is 1186, and then this one is 1165. So Eris, you can see there's a very tiny difference between Pluto and Eris, but Eris is, um, does have more mass. How much mass does this guy have? I'm assuming that's more. I'm not sure. That's uh, moons. So 0 0.7 moons, that must be more. Um, this one has 0 0.1, and then Eris must be around 0 0.2, I'd guess. Yeah, 0 0.2. So, yeah, a lot bigger than Pluto and Eris um, right there. So, yeah, there we go. A nice um, white world. So, there we go. Nice um, reflective guy there. Right, and now moving on to the last object of the day. We can see there's an outer asteroid belt as well. You can see it on the background there. Okay, so last object is H, which actually does get closer than G at some point. So yeah, here it is, all the way out at the very end here. So here we go. Still receiving light from the star, though. So that just shows how luminous the star is. If we go on Hattable Zone quickly. 
We're no, probably going to be quite far out from the zone itself, but it's still getting um, the last bits of light out here. So, yeah, there we go. How far away are we now? So, this is uh, 205. So, yeah, quite a big jump now. But, obviously, that more luminous star, it can still deliver light at this distance. So, yeah, there we go. Okay, but this is um, Object um, H now. Okay, so this is similar in size to um, Dyn AG, although it has a highly eccentric orbit. It is believed to have formed in the rocky ring that orbits a star. It's a boring, cold planet. So, yeah, there we go. Um, so, yeah, that is it for all of the world document that I was given. It has a 2,513-year orbit as well. So, yeah, that is um, Diane H. I really, really hope I'm not scrapping that pronunciation. If I am, I am very sorry. Um, but, yeah, I believe I believe I'm saying it right. So, um, yeah, there we go. But, yeah, overall, really, really nice system. I really like the backstory. I liked all of the um, explanations of all of the objects or explanations sorry i really really like that so yeah very very nice job overall yeah really really enjoyed it so yeah not not too long not too short a lot of reading but yeah that is not a problem really really nice indeed yeah just really like the facts and yeah if we get to the lineup of all of the objects now obviously there's only one gas giant so we can't really pick a favorite out of all of those but for the rockies it's got to be the, the most exotic of them all. Just love it. I really, really like that. The purple atmosphere, the sort of the turquoise and the white sort of color scheme with it. Really, really nice created object indeed there. So yeah, that, yeah, object D, that is 100% my favorite one. But then moving on to some of the other ones, I think this one was also quite notable. The object that was quite similar to it um, there. And I think I'd go with the original, the closest planet to the sun as well with this one. So yeah, I think they're my top um, rocky objects um, in this system. So yeah, overall, very, very nice job indeed. Um, and yeah, really, really nice. Really, really enjoyed it. So um, yeah, obviously, guys, all credit um, for this simulation goes to the Discord user, Grant. So yeah, massive thank you to them for sending this in. Also, if you want to send in your own simulations, make sure to either join my Discord server, link in the description, and you can send me them there. That is the easier option. But you can also um, let me know the name of it um, on the Steam Workshop in the comments. But yeah, please note, I may not see the comments. So yeah, just um, keep letting me know um, every few videos um, if I have not got around to doing your system on the Workshop. But there's a lot of systems that are getting sent at the moment, so it's quite hard to keep up. I may do a few per video. Um, in the near future we'll just see um, how things go but yeah that is everything today guys so yeah, um, yeah I really hope you enjoyed today's video let's see if we can go for 30 likes on this video guys also subscribe if you're new helps on the journey to 12,000 subscribers as I believe we are yeah we're practically there now so yeah just a massive thank you um, for that and yeah that is um, everything guys so make sure you all have a great day and I'll see you in the next video goodbye